I'm starting my seafood trails in Ballycotton, a pretty seaside village in East Cork. A small number of fishing boats are based in the harbour here, and one of them belongs to Sean Roach, who's just returned from a night's fishing. John, how are you? Good how are morning. You? Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm very good, and yourself? That's good. Very good, no? Very good. Now, I know you're after coming back from fishing. That's right, yeah. You're after catching this. What have you got here? Um, I have a bit of a selection, actually. I have a big cod here. It's nice huge. Beautiful fish. Nice and big and yeah. shiny and fresh. We have uh, megram. Not very popular in Ireland. So they're a small variety of sole, are they? They mm -hmm. would be, yeah. 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 Beautiful, yeah. Nice and fresh. We have um, black sole. They'd be more popular. Cooked on the bone, it's the only way, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It is indeed, yeah. yeah. Bit of monk here. I love the cheeks of the monkfish. It is yeah. a real firm, meaty texture. Yeah. We have a fresh hake. Mm -hmm. Ah, so beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's very shiny and yeah. quite shiny eyes, yeah. yeah. And we have a haddock and whiting. They're very similar. Yeah, they are indeed, yeah. Look at it. How are these fish caught? We're using a method of gill netting, where you shoot your nets in the bottom. We, we, a mile and a half each string, we have three strings. So we shoot them. We can lead them up to six, 12, 18 hours, depending. And um, haul them. At the moment, no, the, there's a big moon and the tides are quite big. The nets should be like a wall. Yes. When the tides are strong, they kind of fall down. So that's where you get more flatfish. Is that it? Yeah. Because they are, they're near the, yeah. the floor. OK, yeah, yeah, OK, yeah. the seabed. Yeah. So, so the, like, the tides really affect the Oh, the massively, yeah, massively. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah. Usually, we'd have a bit more than this. OK. What happens to all this beautiful fresh fish? Um, goes over to Ballycotton Seafood, and they grade it, and they have their restaurants and their shops and stuff, and they yeah. fill it. In. Off it goes. Now you're going to bring me out fishing. What, I am what, indeed. what are we going uh, to fish? We're going to try and catch a few mackerel, maybe. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, no matter. I'll just give her a pull in there now. Normally, Sean would have gone straight back out to sea, having unloaded the previous day's catch. But he's generously agreed to take me out for an hour. It's coming towards the end of the mackerel season, so there's no guarantee we'll catch anything. Joining Sean and me on the fishing trip is Peter O'Shea. So I suppose Nevin, we've about 10, 12 metres of water, so it's just trying to drop the hooks down okay. and, and stop a few times on the way down and see do you feel anything. And if you feel a little bumping on the line, you'll know you've uh, a mackerel on it. <laughs> and are we far out from the harbour now here where we are? We're just about a mile off okay. at the harbour and we're just close to the big island. And is this usually a good area for mackerel, usually? Oftentimes you'd, you'd, you'd get a shoal of them and you might get a, yes. a, a few dozen in a few minutes. You always do it by hand and not on a rod? The hand lines are faster. You'll, ah. you'll get the mackerel in faster. So this is what you call line caught. And Sean, do you fish mackerel yourself? Yeah, we, we'd often come out and try for a few mackerel. Yeah, it's like this, this system as well, yeah. But even with the gill nets, at times you okay. get some fine mackerel. Yeah. Oh, beautiful mackerel, yeah. Peter would be giving me tips on how to cook a bit of fish and stuff, so. <laughs> I have something, guys. I definitely have something. I tell yeah. you, you might have a pollock, it's a... It seems big, any it? It's not a shark. Hold on, let me see. Hey. Oh, you got a load of mackerel. Wow, nice. Nice there we go, guys. There you are. No. Uh, that's no, the there's a string like of mackerel it. now, look. They're worth that's... keeping. No. <laughs> that's the only four mackerel in the whole of the bay. <laughs> so, Peter, you do fishing trips? Ballycotton Sea Adventures take people out. Evenings fishing, mm -hmm. day trips, or uh, they do shark fishing as well this summer now. Shark they had a few fishing. sharks, yeah. Okay. It's all uh, tag and, and release. The shark isn't hurt or... Um, or interfered with in any way, really, as little oh. as possible, and he's put back into sea. And they also do trips to the lighthouse. A boat takes people out in the summertime, and you go around, you see the lighthouse. It's a guided tour at the minute. You get a bit of the history of the lighthouse and how it came to be there. And how old is that lighthouse? The light was first turned on on the 1st of June, 1851. There's a great history and a great connection to the village as well, and the fishermen. You had the lighthouse keepers would have been keeping an eye on the fishermen. Back then, fishermen didn't have the electronic means of calling for help, so it was good that you had an extra pairs of eyes out on the coast. Especially in the night time, the, the fishermen in the, of course, in the 40s and things were out herring fishing all night. All they had would have been a tilly lamp. I think you have something again. I, think, I definitely think I have something. It's, oh, I've got a pollock. Have I? Yeah. Oh, oh this is magic. Me. Uh, hold on. I'll bring up my line as well. Oh, no, brilliant. Nevin, this is your catch. That's the pollock, isn't that beautiful? You want to take it? Yeah. We're going to feed the crew. No. Look at that. Build the tingle. We'll put it back in now. You're looking at me. <laughs> Which, you wanted to feed the crew. Yeah, I, I suppose we should put it back in, should we? Well, decide? Yeah, it's not, he's okay. not the biggest in the world. Kiss no for luck. <laughs> ah, there we go. He's lovely yeah, looking, though, isn't he? I think Pollock is very underrated. And like in Ballycotton, a lot of people wouldn't eat it. They'd say it's the kind of the lower end of the fish, but it is beautiful fresh. Is. We fill it up, skin them, take the bones out for the yeah. kids, and then uh, mayonnaise and crush, crushed cornflakes. That's brilliant. Shall we pop them back in? Yeah, perfect. 
Sure so, call. four mackerel, uh, Apollo. I'm pretty happy now. <laughs> you know, I don't think you'll be taking me on full time. Ah, you would not. <laughs> yeah, potentially. Yeah. I'll be your chef in the galley. Oh, okay. that'd be perfect. <laughs> it's hard to imagine more perfect conditions, and on days like this, who wouldn't want to be a fisherman? Almost all of the fish landed in Killy Beggs that hasn't already been processed and bored. One of the large fishing vessels is processed here in the town. And overall, the seafood industry is a big employer in Donegal. One of the smaller processors is Island Seafoods, which takes a more artisan, handmade approach. Michael, it's great to be here in your processing plant. And this has been a family business since 1986. My father started the business in 1986. So um, we buy fish from the boats in Killy Beggs and we process them then through the factory. So we process mackerel, herring, horse mackerel, blue whiting and sprat. We process them into 20 kilo blocks and then we ship them out to places like China, Japan, Africa, mainland Europe. As well as that, we have a secondary side of the business and that's the added value side. So we wanted to do something a bit different with the fish rather than just shipping it out as it was. So we launched the brand Atlantic Treasures and we had two products that we worked with St. Angeles Food College in Sligo. They helped us develop smoked mackerel with a honey and mustard glaze and also smoked mackerel with ginger chili and lime glaze. We have the benefit of buying from direct from the boats and killy bags. So we have the quality side of things. We handle everything from the boats right to the customer gets it in the shop. People in other countries smoke mackerel and it's maybe six to eight percent fat content. But what we do is we pick the highest fat content that we can get here. We pick those batches out and we kind of label them for further processing through the plant. Why do you specifically want the, the higher the, fat the, content? The higher fat is the nicer taste and texture and it's also easier to smoke. And what's the season for mackerel? So the seasons start from September and maybe end of September. Sometimes it, depending on weather, it runs into October and it'll finish about February, end of February. And would these be fresh mackerel here? We freeze everything down and batch it out. This is mackerel that we've defrosted now to bring through to the other side. But mackerel has to be frozen down anyway. When it's frozen down, the oils and the protein go in between the skin of the fish. It tastes better. And, okay. Yeah. So even if you were buying mackerel in the summer, you would still freeze it down then and then process it after that. So you bulk freeze it? To, we bulk to, freeze okay. it and then pick the best batches and then we further process that through the line. So you're very particular about the size of the mackerel? Yeah, so what, when we get the product that goes through the primary side of things, we actually bring out a specific grade for these. So we do a 330 to a 550 size mackerel. And what's happening here? Because they're whole, they're not gutted. These are a hand-cut side fillet, Adam. Here's one of our best filleters. The hand-cut side fillet leaves the head and the tail and just the belly. It takes out most of the bone. Now, it can't be completely boneless, but the hand-cut side fillet gets away most of the bone from it. We look out for as well as the yield, and you're okay. getting the right yield from the fillet. So the yield is between about 48 to 52%. And what happens with all the head and the bones of the mackerel? That... The waste then goes to the fish meal. I was recently down in Clare Island where they have the organic salmon and they use that. So yeah, and that's, that's where it will further go on to ah. then, yeah, yeah. So after this process, when, when Adam has them all filleted, mm -hmm. what happens next? So after this, they'll be put onto racks and then they'll be put into a brine. And the brine lasts about 10 minutes and that adds salt to them to give them a better shelf life. Ah. It's brought in further then into, onto the racks, into the smoker. We'll go and have a look at that, will yeah, we? No bother at all. Thanks a million, Michael. Okay. This is our mackerel now, coming out of the smoker. It's been smoked now just for five hours. What we're doing now is taking them off the racks and they're going to glaze some of them. So I remember I was telling you earlier on about we do a honey and mustard and a ginger chili and lime. They'll be glazing the fish and then it goes back in again then to be cooked. What kind of wood do you use when you're smoking? Oak wood chippings for the, the smoke. But we also then, we launched a plain and a pepper smoked mackerel as well into our range there about a year and a half ago. We wanted to do something different with the plain smoked mackerel, so we came up with a maple wood smoked mackerel, and it just won an award there at the Blast and Heron, silver and Blast and Heron. Congratulations, Thank a you. great Thank award. You. Now I see they're doing this by hand, so this is a glaze they're putting yeah, on. Yeah, so everything's it? done by hand, yeah. This is the honey and mustard glaze here going on. So we do the honey and mustard, ginger chili and lime, and then we also have our plain and pepper. Our plains, the maple wood smoked, and then the mixed peppercorn we do. Instead of a black pepper, we do a mixed peppercorn. So after this is brushed with the ladies are doing, or spreading yep. over the glaze, it goes back in for how long? Yeah, back in for about half an hour, and that's it cooked then. Now, as well as your mackerel, you do the herring. We launched four new products of marinated herring there last year. Dill one, balsamic one, star anise, and also mustard. Same as we use the mackerel, we use the herring as well from what we do. So we only pick the best quality herring as well to further process down the line. And is it the same process? You buy them in, you freeze yeah, them? Yeah, fillet them, and then we cut them into small pieces. Vinegar and sugar kind of pickling? Yeah, so it's a marinated in a vinaigrette. People sometimes are put off by herring because they're very bony, mm. but the marinade actually dissolves the bone in them, so really? there's no bone in them. Yeah, and the, the shelf life then, you get 11 months from the shelf life. 
the Irish market, we've got a great response from people about it. It seems to be like an up and coming thing. I think people for tapas, things like that, people like those kind of things out on a plate. So it seems to. And it's very healthy. Yeah, exactly. This has been absolutely fascinating, Michael. I'm glad you liked it. Fair play to you. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much.